Brooklyn to see the former first lady, Michelle Obama. Super excited, man. It's gonna be cool. Definitely a hero of mine. Just enjoy the night at Oracle Arena, you know? I'm always super early to everything, so yeah. Can't wait. It's gonna be cool. that you see on this stage, the Michelle Obama that you saw in the White House is the same Michelle Obama you'll meet backstage. Yeah. And the same Michelle to my daughters who are, sometimes I get on their nerves. <laughs> I am authentically me wherever I am. You know, I mean, my mother is from the south side of Chicago. Mary Robinson ain't playing. She's not pressed by anything or anyone. Because I'm kind of proud of me. Yeah. I'm proud of yeah. All over the world, but more importantly, all over all parts of this country. And I've been with people who did strongly disagree with the things my husband disagreed with. Maybe they didn't even like me. But let me tell you, I said this earlier, there are more Marion and Frasers out there in all these pockets of our country. And they may have an R by their name, or they may believe in something different, but every day folks are waking up doing the right thing, you know? They're waking up just trying to raise their kids and go to work and save some money. They don't want to be rich. They're not greedy. You know, we just don't get to see each other. You know, we don't, Barack and I got to see those people. And we still believe that because of the people in this country, we are the greatest country on the planet. So we have to tap into that, that goodness that's in us and not in the fear that divides us. So I want people to leave here, you know, thinking about how can I do that and be that positive energy in somebody's life who I don't agree with. You know, how can I be more empathetic and be more compassionate? more people here than Trump's inauguration. <laughs> Should I get on the news? I think opening day for the A's might be there tomorrow. I think. You gotta like my shirt. Notorious RBG. So dope. So that was an incredibly inspiring night. Definitely a highlight of my life. Just an honor to be able to listen to her talk and uh, all her accomplishments, all she's done, her class, her integrity. Even in the face of some of the most disgusting, you know, hateful rhetoric thrown her way. And for any naysayers, it wasn't a political thing. She didn't politicize it. It was just all about the power of kindness and love and empathy and when you couple that with determination and hard work the incredible positive changes you can make in people's lives uh, it was like super inspiring like it was cool man as someone who's had you know a temper and I, I could be petty and I could be immature and all that it's important to hear from someone like her who's like conducts herself with so much class and dignity even though they tried to strip that away from her for years. She talked about, you know, other people, other Americans, conservatives, or if they have an R by their name or whatever, they still get up every day and do the right thing. Empathize with people's circumstances and don't hate them for it. And try to have a dialogue. And the fact that she can still say that after some of the things that were said about her, that's a... Uh, uh, it's just motivating, you know, to be a better person. I wish it was longer. It went by in a flash. But uh, I got to talk to some really cool people, saw some old friends. Like, 
It, it was a great night. It was a great night. I think it's important that we champion uh, the best examples of us, and she's definitely very high on the list from her background and everything she's accomplished uh, in her own right, not just as first lady, but before that. You know, they spoke about how she was the provider and. Barack was the uh, community organizer that was just out in the streets, you know, trying to help people, but wasn't really bringing in money. So, so she's well accomplished on her own, and you know, I don't think I, I, I don't think I could ever catch up to everything she's done in five lifetimes. Like, super inspiring. It's important that we appreciate the good people out there, because I know I spent many years not appreciating anybody and being a bitter prick and I don't want to live that life anymore at all. Hard work, determination, love, kindness, empathy, all those things are super important. Be a positive influence on the world, on your country, on your state, on your city, on your neighborhood, on your household. That's the best way to make a lasting impact. And there was a couple things that were very, very poignant to me. First was she mentioned how reluctant she was to support Barack when he decided to run for president. They both had reservations about it. And that brought me back to this math teacher I had who was one of the best teachers I ever had named Mr. Kylie. We had class during one like election season and he said he thinks the president should be someone that doesn't want to be president. You know, he explained it in such a great way that it totally made sense. Well, you don't want a job that attracts just power hungry people or whatever. So I've always sort of been had that belief, even though, you know, that's too good to be true. That couldn't work out. But to know that someone would be that reluctant to be president, I think that's the closest we could ask for. I don't know. It just struck me that years, 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 years later, that would connect. And then also, very prominently next to the main stage, they had a stage with two uh, sign language interpreters. And it just hit me like what, like a metaphor that could be where they go through all this trouble to set up another stage, set up lighting, have these two interpreters that are good enough to translate spoken words into movements and gestures on the fly in front of a crowd. So you gotta find two of them you gotta set up the extra stage, you gotta set up the lighting, you gotta do all this extra stuff, pay them, everything. There's probably regulations, all kinds of stuff, these hoops you gotta jump through. Just so a few extra people can enjoy the show. And it may not be the biggest <laughs> inconvenience, but it's still an inconvenience, right? But it's worth doing, and people do it Whoever the organizers are, the arena, whoever does it without complaining because it's worth doing. It's worth the inconvenience so that just a few more disadvantaged people, so it's worth the inconvenience. It's worth the extra time, the extra money. Just so a few more people can enjoy. Just so a few more people can be involved with what's going on. Sorry, I'm like tearing up and shit. <laughs> I'm a big fucking softie. And if if that's not like a perfect statement of where we are as a society right now, because there's some people that don't want to be inconvenienced so that more people <laughs> can feel comfortable or be involved or have a seat at the table. You know, whether that be racism, classism, sexism, whatever it may be, it's noble to be inconvenienced to help people. As not just like an American, but as just a human being, I'm totally, totally fine with being inconvenienced a little bit. If it helps somebody else. That could be as simple as like buying a meal for a homeless person, right? I'm inconvenienced because I'm losing what little money I have, <laughs> but like it's worth it. For some reason in this country, so many people value greed and I'm not anti-capitalist at all I just think we need a balance where it's fair if you're incredibly rich like you can be inconvenienced a little bit to help tons of people I can't even compute the idea of I got mine fuck you 
but so many Americans, they almost feel like that's the American way. And I don't think a lot of them even realize it. And Mrs. Obama said some other things like that. I was so happy to hear someone like with her platform say, because it's been things I've been saying on like our podcast and stuff, like education is the most important thing. Like I didn't value an education and now I'm broke, you know, like struggling trying to make a career and that's the crazy thing is so many rich people want to convince poor people that education is just brainwashing don't do it and they're only doing that because it makes people easier to control i don't know man i'm just rambling but incredibly inspiring night and on a personal level it almost felt like a pat on the back because it was like what you've been doing is you're on like the right path like the changes you made in your life and the way you think and the way you treat people it's the right thing. I'm super happy to hear that message from someone that I admire and like I look up to and someone that influential like personally that meant a lot for me because every dot connected like every single dot and that idea of like inconveniencing yourself to help someone else or make someone else's life better or more comfortable whatever it's as simple as the old idea of like a young man give up his seat on the bus to the elderly woman, you know? Like, little things like that makes society better. It makes you better as a person. It makes their life better. I don't know, just seeing that stage right there, like, really connected with me. And it's just like, it was a realization, I guess. In society, we'll do those things for the disabled. We have handicapped spaces and placards and all that, which is great, right? But then we don't do the same thing for people of color to feel comfortable. Black man gets shot and they victim blame immediately. They're not even afforded a fair evaluation or analysis. So how about you inconvenience your thoughts, <laughs> inconvenience your racist thoughts and put that aside for a moment. These double standards we have for different citizens, the whole idea that we were sold about the United States. All men are created equal, all women are created equal. Everyone gets a fair shake. Everyone gets a fair you know, shot at a, the pursuit of happiness. And this far into the country, we're in our third century and it hasn't happened yet. It hasn't happened at all. I talked to a guy last night. He moved to a predominantly white area, a town, small town in the North Bay that can be a little unwelcoming. They're not like overtly racist, but unwelcoming. And I've heard this from multiple people, right? This guy was a white guy. He was a corporate lawyer, very successful career. He told me he had just had dinner with a senator. He wasn't saying it uh, in an arrogant way. He was just saying, I can't believe I get these opportunities sometimes. Very humble dude. His wife is black. His kids are mixed two kids and he's afraid as successful as he is and his wife on her own he said she's very accomplished um, on her own as accomplished as they are as upstanding citizens as they are whatever their kids might still be judged and treated differently and how concerned and worried he was for them growing up in that great community like it's a fantastic community and he loves it but he said just sometimes he hears whispers or, or a kid on the bus will ask his kid you know so what are you black or white like just those uncomfortable things that push a kid away to be like you're different why or you know nobody in the United States should feel different in a way that's excluding them or pointing it out differences should be celebrated it was just such a great conversation with this guy. Such a great conversation. And we both discussed like using our white privilege, <laughs> uh, making ourselves inconvenienced a little maybe to make things a little more comfortable for others. Those are my parting words, man. Thank you to anyone that watches this. I know I ramble a lot, but I hope maybe one other person might connect with what I say. It's just, it's just important 
Go uh, Beto O'Rourke in Texas. I already donated. Allison Hartson for California State Senate. And uh, who else did I donate to? Uh, the kid from Hawaii. This guy in Hawaii I really like. I can't remember his name. I donated to his campaign. Ah, he's great though. <laughs> so I'm gonna continue trying to <laughs> treat people better, treat people nicer. Do my stupid little dog and pony show, something or other tour, these random vlogs. And you know, hope that it helps people or like inspires or it's just positive. Like whether it's just stupid entertainment, like at least it's positive, you know. One love to everyone out there. I hope everyone got their shirts from the giveaway on the something or other tour channel. If you didn't get your shirt, you might not have sent me your address because some people didn't send me their address and I sent them a message or I left another comment and some people still didn't get back to me. So if you didn't get a shirt, it's probably because you didn't give me an address. So if you left a comment on the original video, hit me up.